If you need any Ultimate Team coins, head over to footcoinking.com. There's a link in the description. And if you use my discount code CHES, C-H-E-S, as you can see on screen, you'll actually now get a 10% discount for the rest of FIFA 14. Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again and welcome to episode number 39 of the Borussia Dortmund career mode here on Xbox One. We're into the uh, the second game or second episode of the week and we're still, of course, on Legendary. We stepped the difficulty up yesterday. If you missed that episode, then uh, there will be a link in the bottom left-hand side of your screen to take you to it so you can catch up on all of the Legendary action we've had so far. We actually had a decent start on Legendary, to be completely honest, and hoping to continue that in today's episode. Opening game here away from home at Benfica in the Champions League. We have already, though, secured not only qualification from the group but that top spot as well with uh, five wins from five games hoping to make that six from six here although we didn't get the best of starts as you can see Andre Lima pops the ball underneath the goalkeeper now he's took an early 1-0 lead here and they do need a victory to guarantee themselves uh, qualification from this particular group if Inter win and they lose and uh, depending on what the goal difference and or head to head is between the two sides which of which the details I'm not too sure but uh, a win for Benfica or even just a point for Benfica would be enough to see them through but after going 1-0 down early on and almost going 2-0 down after drawing a good save out of the goalkeeper I, uh, I really want to make sure that uh, you know if you're going to win five from five you might as well at least try and win six from six and after going 1-0 down early on I really stepped up my game for the uh, for the rest of uh, the 90 minutes and hopefully we were going to come out on top but there are a couple of things that we need to uh, to round out today when it comes to the upcoming transfer window of course on Friday we started a straw poll and then over the weekend that poll continued and I mentioned it again in yesterday's episode and linked it in yesterday's episode and uh, of course after today the transfer window will begin in tomorrow's episode and it appears judging by your voting that one of if not both of uh, Ilke Gundogan or and uh, Henrik Mkhitaryan will be leaving the club We're looking for a creative central midfielder to sit alongside uh, Sami Khedira or Nuri Shaheen who offers a lot more in that C uh, CM slash CDM role than Gundogan has offered us all season long and all series long in fact in both years to uh, he's he's just He's been kind of an empty shirt. He doesn't provide goals or assists and he doesn't really chip in too much when it comes to the defensive side of things. He's just kind of there, involved in the build-up play, but not really playing any killer passes or cutting out any killer passes at the other end of the pitch. So I want to replace him and it looks like he may be on his way out. If I can sell him, then I will. If not, then uh, obviously he'll stay at the club. But I do want to bring someone else in for that role. And after scoring two goals in the space of 90 seconds, Benfica very, very nearly brought themselves back in it there with a goal line clearance. Literally another 30 seconds after Ramos had scored our second goal. But we did win the game 2-1 and I was very, very pleased to do so. But anyway, going back to the transfer dealings, is you can well see we've gained £10 million worth of transfer budget from uh, progressing out of the Champions League group. That now leaves us with £17 million in the transfer budget, but only 50 k in the wage budget. So I'm going to have to alter that slightly. And if we're going to bring someone in, we want someone that is top draw. Very, very high quality player is what I'm looking for. And uh, I don't quite think £17 million is going to be enough to bring him in. Now, Mkhitaryan, um, we have adequate replacements for already in the squad with the likes of uh, Memphis to pay and Raheem Sterling <laughs> and Hyung Min Sun and Alessio Churchy and Marco Royce and even though he's predominantly a wide player you could even show uh, throw perhaps Sheridan Shakiri into that camera roll as well and he'd be able to uh, to do a job so we're definitely going to sell Mkhitaryan and uh, we aren't necessarily looking for an immediate replacement for him in this uh, January uh, transfer window in the second season. What I do want is that creative central midfielder. I have put a lot of scouts out and I am scouting a few players in particular at the precise or at this present moment in time and uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you know the names of those players uh, when we get to the end of the episode but I don't want to talk over too much more of the gameplay without really referencing what's going on in the background because we missed out on the drama of that Benfica game by not really picking up on it with the, the two quick fire goals we actually went one nil up here as you can see against Schalke now the last time we played Schalke was actually in the cup and of course, if you remember, Bernd Leno got himself sent off in that game and it cost us. We lost the game 3-1. It was our first defeat of the season and it led to our first Bundesliga defeat of the season as well. And it was a real rocky period for us in the middle of last week. We needed to, uh, to step things up and we were hoping, even though it was away from home again, that uh, we'd be able to step up and be better against Schalke this time around. And a player of class Jan Huntelaar's quality 
really should be putting that header into the back of the net. But they've picked up a corner here. We're going to try and catch them on the breakaway. Alessio Turchi brings it down. Plays it across to Henrik Mikatarian, who's got Gundogan on the inside of him. Again, Alessio Turchi, a good run. Good ball by, uh, by uh, Gundogan this time. Unfortunately, though, Turchi can't quite get the finish in. And they are able to hook it clear. This time, Gundogan actually puts in a decent pass in that situation. Previously, he hasn't even been in the position to play that sort of pass. Let alone actually be the one, uh, you know, creating that opportunity. But they brought on Julian Draxler here, as you can see. Or Julian Draxler on the hour mark. And they pick up another corner. We caught them on the counter-attack from the last one a minute ago. And we're actually going to do exactly the same thing here again. Human Sun's going to play it up quite fast through the air to Alessio Turzi. Beautiful uh, flick over his head. Brings it down in his uh, path well. Although uh, doesn't quite have the, the pace to get away. This time, good one's in the position. But the pass is terrible. But a defensive mistake from the goalkeeper passes it straight back to Alessio Turzi. And after denying us time and time again in the earlier game in the, the Deutsche Pokal, um, Marc-Andre Ter Stegen actually makes a horrendous F, uh, error there and uh, gives us, gifts us, in fact, a 2-0 a lead. But they're going to come straight back at me, straight from kickoff. Julian Draxler plays a nice ball over the top to Klaasian Huntelaar. Already missed one clear-cut opportunity and again is going to disappoint his home fans by missing a second. Just after we'd scored the goal, if they would got a one back immediately, then uh, you really feel that Schalke would have stepped things up and uh, been able to get themselves back in the game. But we're pushing down towards the uh, the stoppage time at the end of the second half. Great whip across from uh, from Lucas Piszczek and unfortunately Mkhitaryan on the end of it can't quite find a finish. But it isn't going to cost us the three points. We get the victory thanks to a brace from Alessio Cerci. One goal was very, very well taken. The other goal was a gift from the goalkeeper. Doesn't matter how they come to you though, you've got to take them when they arrive and we did exactly that. So, Third and final game of the of the episode is against Wolfsburg. Another very, very strong op opposition, in fact. We've had three tough games today, especially now that we're playing on legendary difficulty as well. But the squad seems to have coped with it quite well. We've performed adequately on uh, on legendary so far. Despite the uh, the draw against Hanover yesterday, we're still doing very, very well in the league. Hoping a win today in this game could actually put us back on top of the table. But we're under the cost in the opening few minutes. Junior Melander creating something down the right-hand side. Uh, Robbie Cruz wins the initial header and somehow the ball just bounces free and eventually goes out for a goal kick. But I cannot for the life of me explain to you who or how that ball bounced off of and didn't end up going into the back of the net. But uh, okay, Gundogan is involved in the, the move here, pushing forward, plays through Alessio Cerci, lovely turn inside, good first shot, well saved by the goalkeeper, but Sheridan Shakiri's there, the wonderful first time shot. I was expecting him just to try and, you know, side foot it into the, the near post just to make sure that it went on target. And he comes out with this really, really... I don't know, over the top swivel kick that goes across the face of the goal into the far side netting, perhaps making it a little bit easier for the goalkeeper to save should he been able to get to it, but unfortunately for them he wasn't able to do so, and we're actually going to come at them again just a few minutes later. Hume Min Sun plays the ball over the top to Terran and Shakiri, and as if the technique for the first goal wasn't good enough that is a gorgeous goal from the Swiss. Absolutely superb. And through the middle as well. Crucially, I mentioned earlier on that perhaps Sheridan Shakiri could play in that cam role. If he's going to do things like that for me, we won't miss Sheridan, uh, we won't miss Henrik Mikatarian one bit if he moves on. That is a great first time finish. Goalkeeper, absolutely no chance for the second time in this game. And Shakiri has a brace to uh, to replicate what uh, Alessio Cerci did in the second game of the episode against Schalke. And Gundogan here, good shot, well saved by Benaglio. Human Sun is going to try and get the ball back into the box but unfortunately Junior Melander's there big tall presence in the middle and he blocks the cross out but then we're not done for the uh, the second half or for the first half rather in first half stoppage time heading towards the second half and again no idea how that hasn't ended up in the back of the net we've had our, uh, our luck lady luck be on our side at the, right at the very beginning of the first half and there again at the end of the second we should have conceded on Either, if not both, of those opportunities. But Shakiri looking for a hat-trick. Draws another good save out of Benaglio. He's, uh, of course, Swiss compatriot in the national side. Benaglio is the national uh, goalkeeper for the Swiss team. But uh, Gundogan sets up Piszczek here. And this flashes just wide of that far post. Not necessarily renowned for his goal-scoring abilities, Lucas Piszczek. But he is particularly good uh, as a right back and you know bombing forward and creating the opportunities definitely my favorite right back on the game it has to be said but just as his effort flashed just wide so did Kevin De Bruyne's there on the hour mark very very close to uh, to getting us rather sweaty under the collar as we headed into the last 15 minutes if they brought one back same as you thought with Schalke you would have 
presumed that they would have gotten stronger in the uh, the final stages of the game. But we had a corner there, got well bl well blocked by the defender at the first attempt. Second one's going to drop to Shaheen, and there's going to be quite a few blocked shots here. Gundogan with the first one, tackled. Second one from Mats Hummels, blocked. Gundogan again picks up the ball on the edge of the box, tries to turn the man, blocked. Drops back to Gundogan again, and left-footed this time, does find the bottom corner. And could that be the perfect way for Ilke Gundogan to say goodbye to the team? If that is his final influence on a Borussia Dortmund result with a third goal to secure all three points against Wolfsburg, then I can't think of much ways better to uh, to say goodbye other than perhaps a hat-trick. But uh, he's not really that sort of player, is he? So uh, Ilkay Gundogan does look like he's going to be leaving the team, or at least I'll be trying to get him out of the team. In, in the upcoming episode or two as we head into the January transfer window for the second season. Like I mentioned, we are looking for a creative central midfielder. Throw me suggestions in the comment in the uh, the comment section down below of players you want me to have a look at. I'll tell you the players I've scouted so far. They include Koke from Atletico Madrid. Uh, Rajan Angolan, who is, of course, the Belgian centre mid who uh, can hopefully be the same sort of player that Ilke Gundogan is, or at least he has the same sort of skill sets as Ilke Gundogan has in terms of being offensively good and defensively good as well. And also the third player, which I think will probably be the most popular of the three with when it comes to uh, the feedback from you guys, is Aaron Ramsey. He's 82 rated on the game right now, or in this save right now, and he too offers stuff going forward and defensively. So they're the three players that I'm looking at currently. Uh, Matteo Kovacic, or Matteo Kovacic, has been uh, brought up a couple of times, and I am going to scout him. But uh, someone mentioned in the comments that uh, the NGH has recently picked him up in his Schalke career mode, so I may shy away from Kovacic and maybe perhaps try and bring in someone different. So what, uh, you know, just to make the series a little bit more unique rather than buy the same players as everyone else is kind of why I've never really lent towards buying, uh, you know. Victor Ibarbo in any career mode series to be completely honest so uh, they're the three options that I've got at the minute that I'm scouting if you guys leave some suggestions in the comments I will of course scout them further as well but for now that's going to bring today's episode to a close there will be of course a my player episode later on tonight as it's Tuesday and of course feel free to check your sub boxes for that around about nine o'clock when it will head into your sub boxes but if, uh, if you don't know what and when I upload there is a schedule in the description of this video and on the about tab of the channel page lets you know exactly what and when videos go up on my channel and uh, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button as well. If we could hit over 200, that would be absolutely superb. And let me know in the comments section down below what players to look for. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Like, comment, and uh, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. There are links in the description down below. But for now, that's all from me for this afternoon. My player later on tonight, and I will see you next time.